Hello and welcome to News Center. I'm Parikshit Lutra. More than 600 families in Joshi Mart have been impacted and over 60 families have been shifted to temporary relief centers after cracks developed in their homes have burst in the past few days. Reports of such cracks in the Uttarakhand town's infrastructure were first reported in 2021 after landslides took place in the district of Chamoli. All nine municipal wards of Joshi Mart have now been declared as landslide subsidence zones. The district administration is distributing necessary assistance funds for essential household items to the affected families. It's a painful time for the town residents as many are forced to sleep outside despite the harsh winter. They took to the streets demanding action from authorities. My colleague Santhya Gora spoke exclusively to Uttarakhand Chief Minister Pushkar Singh Dhami on the action taken by the government so far. Listen in. Jo पिच पहले हुआ है उसे भी अनदेखा नहीं कर सकते जोशीमठ के लोगों की अगर बात करें उनका कहना है कि नवंबर 2021 में पहली बार उन्होंने वो दरारे वो दरक देख ली थी पानी का रिसना देख लिया था तब से उन्होंने स्थानीय प्रशासन के चक्कर काटे सीएम आवास के भी चक्कर काटे बट उनका कहना है जो समिति बनाई गई है जोशीमठ बचाओ समिति उनका कहना है कि उन्हें कहीं खड़ा भी नहीं होने दिया गया उनकी बात सुनना तो बहुत दूर की बात है नवंबर 2021 की बात है ये तब से वो कोशिश हम लोग 2023 में हैं तो क्यों राज्य सरकार ने उस वक्त ध्यान नहीं दिया शायद स्थिति इतनी गंभीर होने से पहले लोगों को हम लोग इवैक्यूएट कर पाते नहीं देखिए अभी इस प्रकार के प्रश्न उठाने से मैं समझता हूं कोई वो नहीं है अभी तो इस समय हमारी सबकी प्राथमिकता ये होनी चाहिए मैं उन समिति के लोगों से भी मिला था और सभी से हमने कहा कि अभी सब लोग एक टीम भावना के रूप में आकर अभी काम करें बाकी जो इसका विश्लेषण है वो हम लोग स्थिति ठीक हो जाए सब लोगों को हम बचाव कर पाएं उसके बाद हम स्थितियों का विश्लेषण करेंगे और ये केवल जोशी महट शहर ही नहीं अभी जोशी महट की घटना आई है लेकिन जोशी मठ के साथ साथ जितने भी इस प्रकार के शहर बसे हुए हैं सभी का देखना पड़ेगा कि कितना वेट इसमें धारण हो सकता है सरकारें चाहे किसी भी पार्टी की हो वादा करती हैं लेकिन जब उसको इंप्लीमेंट करने की बारी आती है तो वहां पे प्रॉब्लम वहां तक दिक्कत वहां आ जाती है अब देखिए मैं अगर बहुत पीछे जाऊं तो 2013 के फ्लैश फ्लड्स की बात कर लेते हैं उसके बाद भी आ, उस वक्त भी बहुत दावे उस तक उस वक्त की सरकार ने किए थे अब मैं आपकी सरकार की बात कर लूं पिछले साल भी जो एवलेंच आया था उस टाइम पर भी एक्सपर्ट्स ने बड़ी सारी सलाह दी थी कंस्ट्रक्शन वर्क को सोच समझ के किया जाए ये बार-बार पिछले कई सालों से एक्सपर्ट्स कह रहे हैं लेकिन चाहे आपकी सरकार हो चाहे आपसे पहले की सरकारें हो कोई भी इस पर ध्यान देता हुआ फिलहाल उत्तराखंड में नजर नहीं आ रहा है क्योंकि एक्सपर्ट्स रिपोर्ट दे चुके हैं कि कितनी बार मना करने के बावजूद भी कंस्ट्रक्शन वर्क ना तो ना सिर्फ चल रहा है बल्कि बढ़ता भी जा रहा है और यह खतरा और भी जगहों को हो रहा है उत्तराखंड में नहीं देखिए ये कहना बिल्कुल गलत होगा कि सरकारें इस पर ध्यान नहीं दे रही हम लगातार एक बात में कहता रहा हूं जोशीमठ के लोग कह रहे हैं कि उनकी बात पे ध्यान नहीं दिया गया एक साल तक मैं आपकी बात का जवाब दे रहा हूं देखिए इस प्रकार की चीजें कहना ठीक नहीं है और ये इसको इतना ज्यादा वो करने की आवश्यकता भी नहीं है कि हम हमेशा से कहते आए हैं कि इकोलॉजी और इकोनॉमी दोनों का संतुलन हो और स्थानीय लोगों की वहां पर चूंकि सीवरेज का काम होना है काम बीच में रोका गया वहां पर जो है जो हमारा ड्रेनेज का काम होना है वह काम भी हमने तत्काल रूप से करवाने का भी निर्णय लिया है जो भी चीजें उसके लिए खतरे की हैं या जिन कारणों से यह हो रहा है मैंने कहा कि अभी कह पाना जल्दबाजी होगा कि किन कारणों से आया है एक बार रिपोर्ट आएगी तो उस पर हम लोग पूरी तरह से सख्ती से काम करेंगे and joining me now to take this discussion forward is Dr. Kalachan Sen, Director of Vardia Institute of Himalayan Geology and Anjal Prakash, author at the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. Thank you very much for joining us on CNBC TV 18. Uh, Dr. Kalachan, this was years in the making. Even in 1978, the then collector MC Mishra had warned uh, about rampant construction in the area and what construction in the area could do to this landslide prone zone. Uh, give us a sense of how bad are things currently. You see, uh, it was the 1976 uh, Mr. Committee report. And what we are talking today, uh, this was also mentioned into the report. And one the authority, one the people uh, didn't. And uh, everybody knows uh, that uh, the town Joshimot uh, has been built up for developed uh, over a moraine or uh, some sort of loose material or uh, some sort of debris uh, that was caused uh, by maybe a few thousand years back there was an earthquake uh, that um, 
created some sort of landslides and over the debris that the town was built. This was mentioned there uh, in. Even uh, in 1886, uh, there is one Himalayan visit here uh, where Atkins uh, also mentioned that uh, Yoshimot uh, has been uh, progressing or developing over a, a landslide subsidence zone. So this was known uh, long back and uh, time to time this area was assessed this area, the report was submitted. And, uh, but problem is coming that uh, when we look into Yoshimot, particularly this is a gateway uh, to entry to the Himalaya, uh, whether you go to Badrinath or Hemkun side shrine or Oli or some sort of trekking or uh, uh, some sort of, uh, there is beautiful uh, uh, valley of flowers. Uh, people go there and halt in Yoshimot and then go different directions. This has also been place of strategically important. So from different angles, pilgrimage, tourist, even strategic, uh, there are a lot of uh, developmental activities, even high, there are a lot of rivers uh, flowing uh, to, around this Joshima town there, and, and subsequently uh, to exploit the green energy, a lot of hydropowers have been projected. Mm. So this uh, has been done and we know that all the developmental activities, we also know that it has been the foundation has not been very strong. This was in the loose sediments. And uh, in course of time, uh, because of the uh, people's uh, some sort of income um, and people's uh, some sort of other people, commercial point of view, view, this has grown rapidly compared to other uh, Himalayan town or Himalayan mm. uh, or, or, or some sort of uh, hilly town uh, into these entire Himalayan regions. Right. And us also know uh, this is also a seismically and uh, technically very active. And 1999 in the Chamuli, we have uh, earthquake mm -hmm. 6.8 magnitude. Before that, 1991. Okay. Uh, see, so uh, keeping into all this, we always see that this region is uh, seismically active. This region uh, from because this, the city also has been developed in the slope right. at the six feet height that uh, Joshimot situated. Okay. And, and, Dr. Galachand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please. Dr. Galachand, I will get in more from you. Let me also get in a word from Dr. Anjal Prakash. You've thrown some very important light on the historical background about the vulnerability of this uh, zone. Uh, Dr. Prakash, you have written very recently that it's not just this area, Joshi Mutt, but the entire stretch from Chamoli to Joshi Mutt has been facing disasters over the past few decades. In fact, there were 23 natural disasters in Uttarakhand in 2021, according to some reports, and 308 lives were lost, according to a recent piece by you. Give us a sense of how this is not just limited to Joshi Mutt, but there are several such vulnerable zones which have been neglected over the years by successive governments. Yeah, thank you so much, Parikshit. Uh, see, I've been part of the chapters on mountain and looking at the fragility of the environmental system, especially in the Hindu Kush Himal region. Uh, we have been, uh, the scientific review has, reports have been categorically saying that these are very high risk zones. Uh, these, uh, you know, uh, the mountains are the most fragile in the world. Some of the youngest mountains are found in the Himalayan region. And that means that we have to, whenever, whenever we are planning any large scale development project, especially infrastructure development projects like hydropower, we must rethink. And that is where I, I think mm -hmm. um, uh, Professor has just talked about also that uh, the, uh, the knowledge is there. It doesn't lead to wisdom. wisdom. The science is not, uh, mm -hmm. you know, informing the politics and the policies of the day. And that's the major problem I see here. Right. Uh, so very clearly, it's uh, this is not the first time that we are talking about this. Since the 1960s, there have been successive studies which have been carried on. We know what the problem is in Uttarakhand, even in Joshi Mutt. Do you feel, uh, Dr. Prakash, that the land subsidence that we have seen in Joshi Mutt right now is primarily due to the National Thermal Power Corporation's Tapovan Vishnugarh hydropower project? That is what some experts are saying. Yeah. So, uh, so we have seen that, you know, that major, and then uh, if you, when you talk to the people also, they will tell you, and I've done extensive field work in the area uh, uh, for the last couple of years, and we have talked to many uh, uh, range of stakeholders. One of the major uh, problems is, uh, is the uh, hydropower 
the Supreme Court, even despite all these things and the number of warnings that has been issued, uh, the uh, project is still going on. And you also have to understand, Parishi, that this town is a, it ha has a both historical as well as strategic importance. Importance. Historical because it is, uh, you know, one of the first uh, in the north which was set up by uh, uh, by Shankaracharya. Uh, it is one of the very uh, closest town, close to the uh, the Indian China border, uh, the uh, line of uh, actual control, and that means that it has both strategic and religious significance for millions of people. And that means that we need to be very very careful about what we do there. Uh, hydropower projects are creating havoc not only in Uttarakhand but all all across the Himalayan regions. You go to Himachal Pradesh, you'll have these problems. You go to North, uh, Western Himalayan region and the Eastern Himalayan region, you'll find similar problems. So um, the, the whole point is that hydropower projects are environmentally benign. That's a green energy is a misnomer. The return on investment on hydropower is actually minuscule if you really look at the environment, social and the ecological cost that we have at hand. Right. Dr. Kalachand, we, we see that even when this uh, project was approved, the National Thermal Power Corporation's Vishnugarh hydropower project, when it was approved, the residents of Joshi Mutt had complained as to why this is being uh, built up in an area which has come up on debris. It's landslide prone. It's in an earthquake prone zone as well. Why do you think successive warnings over the years uh, and through, through your uh, analysis and that of uh, Dr. Prakash, it seems quite clear that for decades we have had all the surveys, all the information on these areas. Why do you think it has not been acted upon, Dr. Kalachand? Uh, you see that uh, problem comes uh, uh, whenever such projects uh, were approved uh, or approved. Uh, generally, it is done based on certain recommendation and assessment of a, a scientific team and they submit the report and what sort of structures, what sort of precautions should be taken care. But when is, uh, it is implemented, uh, I think uh, it goes to contractor, subcontractor, sub-subcontractor. And in that process, uh, whenever they made cutting uh, of the, in the ground, uh, underground, uh, when they blast in the underground, they do not follow uh, the scientific way. Uh, I think uh, uh, there, uh, there has uh, been a problem uh, into the system. And that's what all these things are happening, whether we are again doing the road widening for our strategic point of view. Uh, it has been given to a person, again, it, it has been implemented through contractors, sub subcontract, and again, they are blasting in some way, development of the small cracks, even small cracks in long uh, distance of the uh, road, even long uh, constructions, many constructions of the buildings uh, overlying. Uh, that create a, a problem, and this, this particular town is heavily stressed now both from the anthropogenic and developmental activities as well as from the natural processes because so many rivers are flowing down and they are right. also responsible for the erosion and they are responsible for the percolation of the water and that water is also uh, making the rock formation weather. So even if it is uh, the foundation stone, uh, foundation rock was weak, we have already talked about that this was a debris and moraine. Now this weathering phenomenon is another important uh, the playing role uh, to reduce the shear strength of the material so that the rock or foundation uh, below is not able to sustain the load uh, of huge load in, in the world. Dr. Body. Kalachand. Right. Yeah. Dr. Kalachand, my final set of questions now to you and Dr. Prakash. Starting with you, Dr. Kalachand, what, according to you, can be done now? Have we reached a stage which is now irreversible? What needs to be done to protect the people? protect the ecological balance of the area? Uh, you see, ma at, uh, as uh, ma in the beginning also, our Chief Minister Dhamiji mentioned that uh, we know that Himalayan has a fragile environment and we have to make a balance uh, whenever we do any sort of exploitation uh, work and whenever we, we want to do some developmental activities. So ma the balance uh, part, uh, we need to understand very clearly that how much we should venture into any sort of activities uh, Against the uh, against the Himalayan ecosystem, number one. Number two, well, at this moment, the situation has reached such a point that the government also has taken very right decisions that that was supposed to be done. First one was 
that that wondering of all the houses uh, whatever developed the cracks that have been done evacuation of the people from the place number two and number three uh, the, the uh, stoppage of the construction and developmental activities at this moment i think these three important issues uh, uh, will will reduce the impact whatever we have bought from the anthropogenic activities but the natural process but okay. the climate induced phenomena uh, whatever has been has been there uh, in 2021 uh, october there was he heavy rainfall and 2022 february there was uh, rishiganga dhaliganga deluge so a lot of sediment debris right. and what flew through the water they have been responsible for the uh, erosion of the underlying rocks uh, and weathering of the underlying rocks and they have made the rock formation foundation weak and that's what uh, the result of okay. subsidence area so i think the three important all right tasks dr prakash yeah dr prakash my final question to you what what do you think can be done now urgently and long term measures so i'll focus on two things apart from what dr kalachand has said first is to evacuate the people and bring them to a safe zone and give them a dignified uh, way of living i think uh, the uh, you know the problem of rehabilitation of these people also that they get they are thrown into a place where they have no access to basic sanitation water and all these issues so that has to be taken care of there are 20000 uh, you know people 4000 families involved in this one uh, we must uh, take care of them that's number one second is that all the hydro power projects and the infrastructure project which is going on in uttarakhand and not only in uttarakhand but entire himalayan region needs to be reevaluated project by project project by project and that is where i think the major problem lies and that's where i differ slightly with Pro uh, dr kalachand is that these uh, the, these issues are known to the politicians of the day um, and uh, you know I, uh, even after undermining the scientific report when these projects get sanctioned we know where, what why is it so there is huge rent seeking process which is involved in this process and that's why these projects get sanctioned in such a himalayan uh, in some such a sensitive zones uh, at the cost of you know your uh, immediate environment at the cost of cultural um, uh, sensitivities which is involved at the cost of strategic strategy, you know uh, issues that are involved here so i say that please reevaluate right. the projects and bring uh, you know, a to uh, to the situation over to you all right uh, thank you very much uh, dr prakash and dr kalachand for joining us on your with your views on a terrible tragedy that is unfolding in joshi mart let's hope that the people who have been evacuated evacuated get a dignified uh, way of living and a dignified place to stay as well we're heading into a short break but uh, coming up on the other side an exclusive interview with ether ceo tarun mehta on the company's growth estimates electric two wheeler market and much more